live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit London 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Today we're here at the AWS Summit, live at the Excel Center in London. I'm Susanna Streeter and this is my co-host Dave Vellante here today. Now we've talked a lot about uh, the benefits of cloud and the opportunities and also the challenges sometimes for startups and, and other uh, businesses, but also there has been massive growth of the use of cloud services by public sector organizations. And our next two guests here on theCUBE today, um, really this is your area of business, isn't it? So we have Johnny Hugill, who's from Public, uh, but also Max Peterson, VP of Worldwide Public Sector at AWS. Thank you very much uh, for coming on to talk to us. Now, Thank it's you. really interesting. Thanks. During the keynote speeches, I was really taken uh, by one of the speeches from um, the uh, Chief Digital Information Officer at the Ministry of Justice, uh, Tom Reed, and he says, we don't innovate for professional advantage, we do it to take care of people. And Johnny, this is what your business is about, isn't it? Trying to link up startups and public sector organizations to ensure that more people are taken care of. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. I think what we've seen in sort of almost every other sector you can think of is this big proliferation of startups, of new market entrants, of completely new companies kind of really kind of coming to dominate those markets. And, and we haven't quite seen as much of that as I would like to see in the public sector. So what we're trying to do is help tech startups, help innovative new companies uh, to come in and ultimately to kind of deliver better services for everyone. There is real concern though among traditional companies about this. For example, your local pharmacy concerned that a, a really big player is going to move in and take away what they do. How do you, um, how do you kind of bring them along and say, well actually, if you work with a startup, it could improve the way you do business and keep you in business. Totally, I think pharmacy is a really interesting example because uh, in the UK we've seen a bunch of new digital first pharmacies come in and completely transform how people can access their, their pharmacy. So uh, Echo is one example of a UK startup, but now you can get door-to-door -door prescriptions instead of having to go to your pharmacy, make appointments, you know, it's waste loads of time queuing. Um, my view is that these organizations really have to kind of get up to speed with how things work in the wider digital economy. So people have certain expectations for how services should be delivered, for how quickly they should be, access, be able to access things. I think government services are no different. That's pharmacies, that's schools, that's, that's teaching, that's everything. We're here in London. How big is the UK in terms of the growth of your business? Well, the UK has been a leader for a long time. So from the time that they undertook the government digital services business through the G Cloud, um, 11 iterations uh, with, with big ministries like the UK MOJ that you heard, with big uh, nonprofits like Comic Relief, um, and everything in between, educational institutions, uh, startups. Um, we're very proud we've partnered with uh, Public to help continue to encourage that kind of innovation in government technology. I think when we last talked, Max, you, John, and I were, we were I think we were in DC. I think it and was. And you were helping us understand, look, it's this public sector is not just about DC. And you've got a number of activities. We interviewed uh, several of the Cube yesterday at AWS headquarters. One of the things we talked about was GDPR. We were having a conversation with a privacy expert earlier today. He said, you know, the big players really haven't, really weren't ready for GDPR. You made a point in DC last year. You said, day one, you guys were ready. End-to-end uh, -end encryption, a number of other services. So I wanted to circle back to you. And sure. I said, okay, we got to peel the onion. I got to ask Max, put him on the spot. You guys really anticipated this. It's not like you were scrambling at the last minute. Is that fair to say? And I wonder if Johnny, if you could confirm or deny that. Well, I would, I would tell you that at Amazon, we think security is job zero. Um, if we are not making sure that we're continuously raising the bar to improve uh, customer security, security for small businesses, um, then we need to do a better job. A couple of examples, GDPR was a good one where two months before GDPR came into a uh, lawful requirement, Amazon announced that we were GDPR compliant so people could confidently build on top of Amazon. Um, in the UK, early on in uh, 2016, we delivered one of our advanced security services called AWS Shield, which gives everybody using the AWS cloud in the UK and in fact around the world, automatic protection against DDoS. No additional cost, you get it by using the cloud. Those are the types of security services that Amazon delivers 
and probably one of the most important these days when you're working with mm. sensitive workloads is encryption. On Amazon, it's check the box easy to implement encryption for your data on the fly or, uh, or when it's at rest. So I hear that a lot about in encryption and how simple it is. You guys using encryption? You guys do, you do that as part of your? So, so we your work with technology companies who want to work with government, so yeah. many of the companies we back uh, are using encryption. As I'd say, um, some of, the, some of the sort of, particularly in policing and defense and, and the, some of the more sensitive areas of the public sector, this stuff is really, really crucial. And you simply can't kind of get into government without, without you know, being GDPR compliant and without having all the cybersecurity essentials. A lot of the companies we've backed have, have gone on, uh, are using AWS Cloud, have gone on to win public sector business. So in that sense, I'm sure everything's are there any? There was uh, I was oh, sorry. I was saying, are there any special considerations with regard to, to encryptions? Things like, you know, sort of out of scope requirements that I should think about as a, as a, as a customer, or is it really as simple as Max is saying? Click a button and, and uh, check a box and don't even worry about it. It's all taken care of. What's your advice to people in encryption? Is it just encrypt? Everything? Uh, yeah. It, Are there performance considerations or? I mean, again, it, it, it totally depends on the scale uh -huh. of the contract, of the requirements that you're kind of going after. Yeah. For big, major contracts with Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Defense, uh, there are a number of different performance kind of requirements that you need to consider. Um, but in general, I think, yeah, it's, it's yes. quite straightforward. <laughs> kind yeah. of a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, I think the answer yeah. is encrypt everything, yeah. everywhere, all the time. And that also means on-premise, it also means on your devices, right? I mean, it needs to be just the standard approach that people take to data protection these days. And, and unfortunately, for many organizations internally, it's hard. Uh, and so that's why people are moving to Amazon so that they get that security built in. Mm. It actually is the number one reason why people are moving to AWS today. They want the built-in security and then after that, they want speed and innovation. And there was a really interesting statistic today uh, at the keynote. Uh, did you hear that LSE, London School for Economics, uh, just completed a study and they showed that 95% of all startups that happen today would not happen if they had to depend on legacy infrastructure because it was hard and expensive. And that's candidly why being a startup in today's cloud-based world is a much better value proposition. Mm -hmm. You can focus on the problem rather than all of these important but complicated factors like the, encryption. The other thing there, the London School Economic Study showed is the productivity gains for those companies that use cloud. Now there haven't been obvious productivity gains in the, I, I, as a result of technology across the board. We're starting to finally see the uptick. Back, remember back in the PC days, you can, you can see <laughs> productivity, you can see upticks everywhere except in productivity, and all of a sudden it shot up. And we've been predicting for a couple of years now, you're going to start to see it, cloud being one of the reasons, other new technologies, and so that was another key finding of that study that I found well, interesting. Well, Sainsbury was up on the yeah. stage today again, and what they have now found, right, was they have found a 60 to 70% improvement in productivity. That, you know, that was their number up on the stage. Interesting, you're talking about kind of legacy companies. We've got the you know, Ministry of Justice. So in fact, there was a bit of a battle, wasn't there? Yeah, well, we've been founded since 11. That was hilarious, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, Sainsbury's yeah. are only 150 years old. And <laughs> MOJ got up and said, well, in this battle of historical significance, we, our mission started in 1178. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's interesting to talk about those, but really, your bread and butter, Johnny Hugel, is the startups, isn't it? Trying to you know, spot talent out there and think, who could I partner these guys up with? Yeah, totally right. Um, a, a really important thing that any organization that is trying to innovate today can do is do market horizon scanning. You know, really understand what is out there, what the art of the possible look like, uh, what the new technologies that are going to change the game look like, uh, what these companies are actually really capable of, um, where the and kind of sweet spot innovation is. And they might not know that is. themselves. It's, uh, but it's a really difficult thing to know, especially if you think about what the kind of day-to-day -day job of government is, which is really running the country, right? It's pretty difficult to ask them, by the way, guys, you also need to really understand what the prospects for AI startups are looking like across the country or across the world. Uh, you need to understand who the kind of blockchain innovators are. It's a big challenge, and it's something that we are really kind of trying to help them along the way. As you said, a lot of that is partnering with bigger companies uh, and, and kind of forming the right ecosystems of smaller companies, large companies that can help them scale, uh, and, and kind of taking government on that journey along with it. Well, and the pace of change is another challenge. Yeah. I mean, six months in this business now is, a, is an eternity, it seems mm. like. I right, remember the crypto was so hot a year ago, not that, I mean, I'm a fan of, of a lot of the underlying technologies. It was interesting to see how Amazon 
dealt with that. You asked a lot of questions, like what do you really need to do this? You guys came up with a couple of solutions here, but keeping up with the pace of change is one of the, I would think, one of the mm. key values that you provide. It's, it's, it's really a challenge, and um, I think now in the UK, 15% in, in, in FinTech, 15% of the financial revenue in the UK has come from startups founded in the last five years, right? So a market, a big legacy market, as important as financial services, has just been completely turned on its head by Revolut, by Monzo, by you know, all, the, all these new guys. And, and, and in government, we are going to see the same thing at some point, because it's these new Well, and yet, I, I'd observe that if in financial services, those yeah. are good examples, but the industry still hasn't been disrupted yet. Healthcare still hasn't been disrupted. It, they're both ripe for disruptions, and it's, it's happening. Yeah. But, I think, but I think if you look at those, that's part of what Johnny was saying, some of these early industries like finance have maybe been the, the initial disruptors, but I do believe that there is a wave of opportunity and disruption coming in this whole GovTech yeah. space. Yeah. Um, uh, one of them recently was uh, at Zuna, right? At Zuna, came in and acquired a contract with the UK government that completely upended an old way of doing job search. They, they had a better mousetrap. And fortunately, in this case, right, government recognized it and they used them. Yeah, I mean, I would say that was a, a really momentous thing. Um, it, the most used website in, in the entire of the UK government, which is the kind of find a job search site, um, Adzuna came along, replaced an incumbent supplier who'd been doing it for years, probably quite badly, uh, came along with their new AI-driven platform um, using AWS Cloud, and are now just delivering a service that everyone prefers. Well, I saw NHS has announced, what, a half a billion pound almost, uh, transformation project, modernization, and you, when you peel the onion, you see a lot of startups. Mm. Behind the startups, you see a lot of cloud going on, because that, the cloud attracts startups, startups are where the innovation is, and if you're going to modernize and spend a half a billion <laughs> pounds, you better look to the innovation yeah. engine. Yeah, yeah. I, one of the things about uh, the cloud computing and one of the things about government policy that's critical is that it actually encourages that kind of innovation um, because a lot of small companies are the source of new ideas, but procurement sometimes gets in the way one of the things that we think is fact has worked well is the UKG cloud contract, where on the UKG cloud, um, over 90% uh, of the suppliers on the G cloud contract are in fact small and medium enterprises, and where 45% of the sales since inception on G cloud have actually gone to SMEs. Mm. So it's really transformative. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to us about this really fast-moving space. I really appreciate it, Max Peterson and Johnny Hugo. Thank you for Thanks joining us. Thank you so much. Great to talk. On the Cube. That's all from us for now from the Excel Center AWS Summit here in London. <laughs>